Let's talk about the wise division of debts and assets on divorce, what to ask for and what to think about post-divorce in your financial planning. My name is Laura Hurd and I'm an attorney who has practiced family law in San Antonio, Texas since 1987. And I've often seen people get so emotionally caught up in their divorce that they make unwise choices in what they want to ask for and fight for in the property division. Now, if you go into a divorce and are so emotionally attached to certain property that you're willing to give up everything to get that one piece of property, it may hurt you in the long run. I have seen people who fought for the house when they really couldn't afford the house payments. And then soon after divorce, they ended up going into foreclosure or bankruptcy and losing that house. And I've seen people get so emotionally attached to certain assets, not realizing how much those assets are going to cost them in taxes or other liabilities. And then it turns out that those assets really don't last very long. So it's important to think strategically. For example, pets are considered property in Texas. And even though you may feel like they are your kids, and, and I've seen people work out custody arrangements for sharing custody of pets because nobody wanted to give them up. If you are gonna give up a lot of your assets just to keep the pets, keep in mind that Pets have shorter lifespans than we do. They may not live more than a few years and they cost money. You may have paid money to get that pedigree dog, but you're gonna have to pay for vet bills and food and all of that. And you need to look at whether your income can actually support that. Can you take care of that pet after divorce on your income? Also, um, when it comes to things like vehicles, they are actually liabilities. You may have really be emotionally attached to that vehicle that you recently bought, but look at the payment that's attached to it and what the vehicle is actually worth. And you may find that the vehicle is not worth what you owe on that vehicle. And remember, the vehicle isn't going to last forever. In five years or so, you're going to want to trade it in and get something else. So it's not really worth giving up a lot to keep a vehicle that is actually a liability. Now, when you're thinking strategically about what to ask for in your property division, you need to think about taxes. You need to think about your income. You need to think about how much it's going to cost to maintain that asset. If you are going to keep the house, for example, the house may have some equity in it, which means you're going to have to buy out your ex-spouse's half of the equity in some way, maybe by giving up other assets or by taking on more than half of the debts or maybe by signing a note to pay him over time, if that is something that y'all can agree to. But not only are you paying for that half of the equity, but you also have to pay for homeowners association costs, mortgage taxes, and the maintenance and upkeep on that house. It may be that without your spouse's income, you really can't afford to do that. You know, child support and child and spousal maintenance is not reliable income. You know, your, your ex-spouse could die, they could lose their job, or just quit paying you and you might have a really difficult time collecting. And so it may be that that money that was promised to you in divorce in terms of child support and, and spousal support and property division money never comes to you. So how are you going to pay for the mortgage on your income alone? If you can't do that, that it might be wise to sell the house instead and divide the money. And remember, when you sell the house and divide the money, it doesn't have to be divided 50-50. You need to look at the whole picture of what assets and debts each side is getting to determine how the cash should be split up. 
So it, it's important to think about your budget. You've got to, to plan ahead with your income only. What can you afford and what do you need? You're going to have a lot more expenses right after the divorce. You may have moving expenses. You may have to buy new furniture. You may have to you know, pay rent somewhere for a while. And so think about all of those extra expenses and new expenses that you're going to have and how much money you're going to need. And it may be that you need some cash or liquid assets, at least some savings. So while you consider the stability of the asset, such as a retirement account, it's very stable. It's going to be around a long time. It's going to appreciate in value, but you can't take that money out early without incurring tax and penalty. And of course, it's going to be worth a lot less if you're cashing it out early. And so if you don't have liquid savings and investments, and you are trading your liquid savings and investments for a portion of a retirement plan, can you afford on your income to live without dipping into that retirement plan? So some, some assets are good investments, but they're too expensive for you to maintain. And you need to take something that's more liquid in cash instead. Look for assets that don't depreciate over time. Look for assets that are going to be stable long term. Think about what you need in terms of liquidity and cash. And then you may need to look at what your plans are for the future. If you don't have enough income coming in, maybe you need to further your education and your career or your skill level and get some certifications so that you can increase your income. Invest in yourself so that you can support yourself. What are you going to need now so that you can do that so that you can have more income coming in in the future that you're not dependent on somebody else for? Priority auction. Priority action item, make a budget. Second priority action item, evaluate the assets in terms of stability and cost and whether or not they are going to be liquid and help you in that way. And then if you are really wanting to get something because of its emotional value, you just have to decide, is it worth giving up more than what it's worth because of your emotions and your attachment to that item. Know how much you're going to need for your monthly expenses. And once you think you have it all figured out, then talk to a certified financial planner. There are people who have studied and made a career out of figuring out how assets are going to appreciate over time and what you need in order to get to your financial goals in the future. So if you are looking towards retirement or you want to pay for your education or you want to pay for your children's education or you have a nice vacation planned that you you want to have money for, you need to think about how much money it's going to take to do those things and ask a financial planner to help you figure out how, how long it's going to take you to save at what rate or how much you're going to have to put aside each month in order to have enough money to do that thing that you are looking forward to. So after divorce, if you haven't done these things and you end up with something that you find out suddenly there's a lot more tax liability that you expected or you find out that you really can't afford to keep this asset, again, go talk to a certified financial planner about what things you should get rid of and sell, what things you should keep, and what things you need to be looking towards saving for the future. I hope this helps. Give me a call and we would be happy to help you figure out what you need to do in order to divide your assets on divorce. But remember, attorneys are not certified financial planners. Sometimes you need more than one expert to give you some input.